Okay, so as promised, today's video will be all about how I process my images. And I know that going outside when it's dark and uh, setting everything up, getting the first image of the night is very exciting. But I think that bringing the images back to the computer is uh, where the most creativity starts. Because there is not a lot uh, you can do before. You can position the object you are imaging in one of the corners or directly in the center if you like. But uh, that's pretty much it. So like I said, I think that the most creative choices uh, are happening when you are starting to process your images. And I see that a lot of people are questioning, you know, how much should you process your images and if you would ask me I would say as much as they personally like because at the end of the day for me uh, astrophotography is art I mean you can do science with uh, amateur gear if you want but I think that for most of us we are just trying to take uh, pretty images of the universe so we chose astrophotography to express our creativity and that's why I think that uh, in the end of the day uh, we are all artists and I don't know what intrigued you to get into astronomy. I always like to listen to some mythical stories about the stars and uh, I love the science fiction movies. But when I first saw the image of the pillars of creation from the Hubble Space Telescope, I was blown away that that really exists. So I wasn't blown away by the science behind the image, but it was the abstract beauty of the image and what I saw in it. So if you want to get people interested in uh, astronomy, I think the images have to be beautiful. Because what does art do? The answer to that is that it surely provokes an emotional response. And I like how Pablo Picasso gave art uh, a purpose in one of his quotes. The purpose of art is washing out the dust of daily life of our souls. And I think you can disagree with this man, since art is uh, where we really make uh, meaning beyond the language. And I know that uh, there is as many ways to define art as there are people in our planet. And uh, each definition is influenced by the unique perspective of that person, as well as by their own uh, personality and character. But in the end, art is anything that makes your emotions go. So to summarize it, if your images make an emotional impact on the people looking at them, there is really a high chance you will get them interested. So as long as you don't cut the six different images, stitch them together and say this is what I've imaged, uh, I think you should process your images um, really as much as you like and just uh, let your creative juices flow. But with all of that said, now let me show you how I process my images. Okay, so I already imported my stacked image into Photoshop and I noticed a big issue as soon as I saw the first exposure. And you can see it here, here, here and here so all of those are reflections that i will have to clone out uh, somehow but uh, i'll do this in the end enough complaining let's just go to editing and uh, first let me take care of my white balance so i always make a copy of the original stacked image by pressing the ctrl and j and i will first take care of the white balance so on the keyboard you can press shift ctrl and a and that will bring you to the raw imaging editor now i just pick the white balance tool and here you can try to click on a few different places to see where you get the best result. So let me try first here. That's the green. Let me try here. It's kind of the same. Okay. I think that this part worked. But if you are not 100% sure, you can always try to increase the vibrance and the saturation. And you can see which color is dominating. So for example, if I take the top slider, you see that the blue color is too dominant which means that the white balance is set uh, way too cold. So if I reset the vibrance and saturation, you can see that there's a light blue hue in the background. So let me pull it back a little bit and warm it up. And you can see that this looks uh, a lot more neutral. So let me hit OK here now. Now let's go to levels. So image adjustment levels. Here just make sure that you don't clip any data. So here is fine, hit OK. Now I always go to the levels again and go through each channel individually. So let's go to the red channel, it's OK. Green channel, we can still pull it back a little bit. I think that here is fine. Go to the blue channel. See, this is a little bit too much, let's go back. Okay, so I think that for now this is okay, so okay. Now let's make our main stretch. So go adjustment and curves. Now at this point find yourself a dark spot and hold control and click it one time. And then find yourself a spot where it's just a little bit brighter. And again hold control and click it. You get another marker here. 
Now let's go to a really bright spot, hold control and click again. And now these are our anchor points. And while this point is still selected, first let me move this a little bit to the side. And now I just press the up arrow key. Here just make sure that you don't take it too far. Because it's really a lot better if you make a lot of small adjustments than uh, one huge one. And I think I'll leave it like that. Hit OK. Now let me go check my levels again. Which adjustment and levels. Okay, so let me leave levels like that and let me show you something. So for example, if I zoom in a little bit. Okay, that's too much. And now here you can see there's a lot of purple and green and some blue spots. But if we go back to the camera raw editor by again hitting shift, control and A. And let me zoom in here. So now let's go to the details tab. And here you can see this uh, color slider and I just always drag it to the end and you can see all of those green, purple and blue spots disappeared. So if I hit OK now, let me zoom out again. And if we go to the levels now, so adjustment and levels, you can see here now we can move the black point just a little bit more. Yeah, I think that here works. So hit OK. Okay, so at this point I will duplicate this layer. Now let me go to image, adjustment and selective color. Now here is the point where you can get a little bit crazy with the colors. But uh, all I will do is probably keep the red color here. Go to the cyan slider and drag it to the left side. And here you can see we pull out a little bit of the red color. But as you can see, not only the horse head uh, nebula was affected, uh, also the flame nebula got uh, a little bit more red, which I really don't prefer that much. So if this is not uh, a problem with you, you can leave it like that, but I'm going to hit OK. And at this point I could make a mask and just mask that out, but I'm going to do it the dirty way, so let me get the razor tool. So make sure that the hardness is set to zero and the opacity to 100%. And I'm just going to raise that part. That seems fine. I'm going to merge those two images and create a duplicate. Now at this point we got our basic processing done and from here I would really recommend you to experiment by yourself but I'll show you how I like to get a bit more out of my images. So before I started astrophotography uh, I've done uh, quite a lot of landscape photography and I got used to use uh, luminosity masks and this is nothing special. It just lets you to edit the different parts of uh, the image based on the luminosity. Now I would really recommend you to get a free plugin called uh, Easy Panel. Uh, and it's from Jimmy McIntyre. I will post a link down in the description. And uh, I think that all you have to do is to sign up for his mailing list. Uh, then you get the Easy Panel for free. And uh, I'm not making commercials for anyone. But uh, I've been using it for a long time and I tried many different options. But I think that the Easy Panel is really the simplest one to use. It's sort of similar if you go in Photoshop to select and the color range. Here you can pick different uh, colors uh, if you like to edit. Or you just go to the highlights, midtones and shadows. You can play with them what you want to select. And all of the luminosity masks uh, work the same. So everything you can see in white is selected. And everything that's black is uh, unselected. And I know that there's a saying, so white reveals, black conceals. And here you can play with the fuzz and the slider. It acts like a feathering option. But like I said, I think that this tool is very limited. So I usually don't use it. So let me close that. And let me show you how the easy panel works. So again basically you have the options to work on brights, darks or midtones. And in this case the most brightest parts are probably the stars, not so much the nebulosity. So I will go for midtones and just click the midtones. And here you can see the mask folder. But if you click through here you get a few different options. And again everything that's white will be affected the most. So for example I like this fifth map. And I really don't want to affect any dark spots in my images. So before you make the selection, let's go to image, adjustment and levels. And here you can really increase the contrast of the mask. So if I don't want my darks to be affected, I just will take this slider and pull it more to the middle. 
so for example now uh, my darks will be a lot less affected but we can still make it a little bit more darker and let me try to pull this mid-tone slider now after you are satisfied with the selection hit ok and here make the selection and you don't have to worry if you don't see everything selected because the mask is uh, still applied to, even to the gray areas but let me minimize the panel now hit ctrl h and everything is still selected we just uh, hit the marching ends and now if i go to image adjustment and curves let me pull this a bit to the side and i pull it up you can see that the dark spots are uh, untouched so let me show you before and after So I'm satisfied with that, so I'm going to hit OK. And you can spend a lot of time with these luminosity masks. So for example, if I zoom a little bit into this part, you can even increase the contrast from this part to this part. But that uh, mostly depends on uh, how much time are you willing to spend uh, in those luminosity masks. And I'm really encouraging you to start to use them, because uh, after you get used to them, uh, they are a very powerful tool to use uh, in uh, astrophotography, or should I say in uh, processing your images. So I won't spend a whole lot of time on that, because this is really the part where there is a lot of repetition going on, and I spent uh, quite a lot of time on uh, those uh, different uh, masks. But let me hit Ctrl and H to bring back the selection, and Ctrl D to deselect. And let me show you the next thing why I like the luminosity masks. So let me just edit the darks. I would just like to show you that part. So let me click through them again. Okay, I'll pick this one. Image adjustment levels. Pull the mids down. I don't want to get them affected. So this is the point where the noise starts to make some problems but I'm going to hit OK and make the selection. Now let's go to select, modify and expand. Now I'm going to expand for one pixel, hit OK. Now again go to select, modify and I'm going to feather it for let's say for 5 pixels, hit OK and again Control H to hide the selection. Let's go to image, adjustment and levels. And since now only the darks are selected, let me move the black point a little bit more. So in this case I will go a little bit overboard uh, just so you can see it a little bit better. But this is the before and after. So let me pull it back a bit. This is enough, let's hit OK. And now with the dark selected, let me go to the raw editor again, so shift, control and A. Oh wait, maybe we should make a duplicate of this layer. Now let's go to the details panel and just crank up the noise reduction, hit OK. And you can see that the rest of the image wasn't really affected. The only effect that it got was on the dark spots. So if I show you the before and after. So you can really do a lot with the luminosity mask, so again I cannot encourage you more to use them. But okay, there is just one more thing that I would like to show you, so let me hit Ctrl D to deselect. And in almost uh, every image I decrease the stars, and that's uh, very simple to do, you just go to channels, hold the Ctrl button and click on the RGB. But for example, if you see that uh, some of the nebula is selected, just go to the lasso tool, hold the Alt key and just circle around. To deselect it. Now at this point you want to go to select, modify and expand. And I usually make the expansion uh, quite extreme so let's go for 5 pixels. Hit OK. And then I like to feather the selection for quite a lot so let me go to modify, feather and let's go for 4 pixels. Hit OK. Now again I will just hide the selection by Ctrl H. Now let's go to filter, other and minimum. Now here make sure you got roundness selected and you really want to be careful with the radius. You don't want to push it too high 
because you will end up with a mess so i would recommend you to take it easy here so i'm going to go with two pixels two and a half i think that this will work because the stars will be decreased for even more uh, after you hit okay so let me show you hit okay you see if i click back the difference is quite drastic and i think that i basically covered everything now let me show you how i sharpen my images so you can go to filter other and high pass filter and here again be careful not to push it too far so i'll go with five pixels hit ok now here you have an option if you want to go with overlay or with soft light but i usually go with the soft light because it's uh, not that aggressive so i hope you can see the difference and the last thing that i sometimes do but first let me get rid of that layer because that comes later let me duplicate let's go to filter blur and gaussian blur and you can push the gaussian blur for quite a lot so i will leave it at 25 pixels hit ok go to image adjustment and levels and all you want to do here is to increase the contrast and bring the midtones a bit closer and this really looks like a disaster now but hit ok now first lower the opacity to zero now very slowly push the opacity back on and this usually softens the image a bit but it gives it a very nice glow so for example if i show you here but you have to be careful with the opacity so i usually keep it at around 10 percent and i think that that's enough and if you really think that the image is too soft you can duplicate this layer and do again the same so filter other and high pass and again leave it at five pixels hit ok normal and soft light and this will bring back a little bit of the sharpness i will try to include more editing videos in the future because i really can't show you all of my tricks in one image but if I missed anything really important, uh, please do type it down in the comments and uh, I'll make sure that I cover it in the next video. So I hope you found this video useful and uh, I'll see you again next time. Take care guys. Bye.